uh, I'm going to start a new series for the next four weeks, four Sundays. And you do not want to miss this next four Sundays because it's talking about the last days, all right? Um, there's a lot to talk about when they talk about the last days, all right? But I'm going to focus only this time, uh, the next four Sundays, from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. And hopefully, and maybe who knows, in the future, the Lord may give me more stuff and more time to talk. I may continue on. But for the next four Sundays, uh, talking about the last days, I want to focus from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. And I'm going to explain to you why and what the Spirit of the Lord has put this in my heart. All right? So let's read together if you have your Bible. If not, you can look at the screen on top here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 1. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. All right? And as you know, we are living in the last of the last days. This was written many thousand years ago, and that was last days, all right? So we are living in the last of the last days, all right? And terrible time will come in the last days, all right? People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, uh, abusive, disobedient to their parents, hello, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, Slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacher treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having, now listen carefully, having a form of godliness, and we see this a lot right now, having a form of godliness but denying its power. They're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Have nothing to do with such people. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just want to thank you once again for this opportunity that you have given to us to be here, to meet up together as one church. And Father, I pray right now for the anointing of your Holy Spirit in this place. Father, that you will speak to us, that you will open our heart, and you will do something deep in our life today. Father, we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everyone say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Now, as I'm going through this earlier, as I was reading through this, uh, we're going to talk about, from verse 2, people will be lovers of themselves and so forth. And what I want to concentrate the next four weeks is the spirit of the world. Now, when, 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 Timi, when Paul talked about this in 2 Timothy, that people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money and boastful, all those things that he described here in, in verse 2 to verse 5, is talking about a, the spirit of the world that is totally against God. All right? And what I want to focus is not the sign of the end time, but rather the spirit of the world in the world today that is operating in the world, but the sad thing is coming into the church. And I want to make, I want to share this so that you be aware and know the spirit of the world that is trying to come into our families, into the church, so that we can stand firm against those spirit of the world that's trying to come in. Amen. So I want to describe to you, I want to share with you, and I want to ask you to open your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And verse 1, the Bible tells us that there will be terrible times in the last days. And sometimes when we think about terrible times, we always, talk, talk, we, we always think about earthquake, you know, disasters, which is one of the signs of the end time, flood, all kinds of things that is bad. But in this verse, in the context of these verses here, there will be terrible times in the last days. And this word terrible, it means it's going to be a time that will bring grief into our heart. There will be a time that will cause our attitude to change. This terrible times here is talking about the spirit of the world that's coming into the, that's in the world that's trying to come into the church. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, talk about the exact thing that I'm saying here. He says in verse 12, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Now listen carefully. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit 
who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So Paul talking about two spirit that is not the same, that is contrary to each other. The spirit of the world and the spirit of God. So that's, if you think about it, what Paul is saying here is this. There is a spirit that is not of God. In fact, the Bible tells us the God of this world, the devil, had blinded the eyes of the people, correct? So we're talking about the spirit. Listen carefully. I didn't make this up. The Bible says it's a spirit. And that spirit is a demonic spirit. It's of the devil. And it's not of God. And it's here influencing the world and it's tried to influence the people of God. And once it gets the people of God and influence the people of God with the spirit of the world, it will take the Christ out of us. It will take the influence of God. It will stop us from hearing the voice of God. And we need to be careful, all right, in this last day that our attitude, our mind is protected by the Holy Spirit, all right? Now, as we read earlier, there are this different description of the spirit of the world here. And I'm not going to go in order to start, first of all, people uh, will be lovers of themselves. But I had chosen one of the spirit here, okay, the description, there's so many of them. But one of them that I've chosen for this Sunday, because as we are partaking the communion, I believe this, this particular thing that I've chosen to talk about is feeding into what we are celebrating today, our, our communion, all right? Because communion is all about what Christ has done on the cross for us, all right? And this thing is exactly what I'm talking about, why he came more than 2,000 years ago, died on the cross for that reason, all right? And that thing is found in verse 2 here, sorry, in verse 3, it says, without love, un Forgiving, I, I put it right here so that you know what I'm talking about. Unforgiving. This is another spirit of the world in the world today. I mean, we are not even talking about the world because there's nothing we can do about it. But it's coming into the church. People of God are now having this attitude, unforgiving spirit in their heart. And I say, how can it be? How can we, God's people, have unforgiving spirit because it's totally against the teaching of God. Amen. The Bible tells us in the, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32, it says, And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. That is a command that Paul gave us in terms of having a forgiving heart. In the book of Colossians, Paul again talked about it. Chapter 3, verse 13, he said, Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. All right? Bearing with one another. That means there will be a time you just can't stand it anymore. You feel like slapping. You feel like boxing. You feel like screaming because the person is so irritating or the person has hurt you so much. But the Bible says bear with the person. And it's not just bearing with each other, but forgiving one another. All right? This is what he's talking about here. But the spirit of the world is opposite of forgiving as God has commanded us. The spirit of the world is unforgiving. All right? And unforgiving actually is part of human nature, all right? Before you were born again, before you were saved, all right? The natural reaction of something that happened to you that caused hurt, a pain, distrust, is to not forgive. Yeah. It's the natural reaction of a human being. It comes from the root of selfishness, right. pride. And those things are not of God. But now that you and I are born of the Holy Spirit, we are not that person anymore, all right? We don't live by the natural being. We live by the Spirit of the Lord inside of us, amen? And it is totally contrary to the Spirit of Christ, all right? Because Christ forgave, all right? That's the Spirit of forgiving in Christ, and we're going to talk a bit about it later, all right? The purpose 
of God forgiving us and then command us to forgive is because what He had done on the cross. Because of the blood of Christ shed on the cross for us, there is forgiveness of sin. That forgiveness of sin caused us to have a relationship with the Holy God. That is the whole foundation of Christianity. The minute we choose not to forgive, we have moved away from that foundation that God, Jesus Christ, died for us. You can say, I still go to church. I still read my Bible. I still... And some of you may even say, I hear from the Lord, the voice of God. No. If you choose not to forgive, whatever voice you hear is not of God. It cannot be from the Lord. Because the first voice you will hear from the Lord, if you choose not to forgive, is to forgive. Because you can't move, you can't move forward if you have unforgiveness. Because the whole basis of Christianity is God forgive us. And as God forgive us, we now choose to forgive one another. That is it. Forgiveness is part of God's nature and God's plan for all of us. That is why we are the people that walk in forgiveness. We have no choice in that area in a sense. Either we choose forgiveness or not. There's no middle ground in that. Forgiveness is directly linked to the death of Christ, to the work of Christ. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 31, God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgiveness, and forgive their sin. Repentance. Forgive their sin. It goes together, all right? That is salvation. Without forgiveness, there is no salvation. And, and that's what it, it, it's linked to Christ's death and the work of Christ. In the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 14, says, in, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. That's it. The forgiveness of sin. The foundation of Christianity. And that's why we have to choose to forgive. And, and when we choose to forgive, we are choosing to walk in the forgiveness of Christ. When we choose to forgive, we are walking directly in the work of Christ on the cross. That is forgiveness. In the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 37, it says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Wow, look at that. The grace that we receive, we are saved by grace, all right? It is not by work. The, when you choose not to forgive, you are basically telling God the forgiveness that God gave you is because of what you have done by works. It's not by work, it's free. It's by grace. And that grace that you receive from the Lord requires of you responsibility and accountability. That responsibility and accountability come in line with the forgiveness of God and that you choose to forgive one another. All right? That grace requires responsibility and accountability from your side. We need to start walking in the spirit of forgiveness. That's why many times the Apostle Paul say, by your love. Jesus say, by your love. By your love. The love in action is forgiveness. You can't say, I love you, but I choose not to forgive you. You see that? That's a man say, Brian McGill say this. There is no love without forgiveness. And there is no forgiveness without love. As simple as that. And love, uh, forgiveness, just as much as love, is a lifestyle of a Christian. This is who we are. This is our lifestyle. God, through Jesus Christ, has called us into a holy calling. And in that calling, a holy calling, 
is to walk in forgiveness every single minute of your life. Every single day, every single hour of your life. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it said this, Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. Ooh, that can be quite difficult, correct? Repay evil with blessing. Some of us say, evil with blessing? Oh, no, thank you. But that's what the Bible says. Repay evil with blessing because to this you will call. Hallelujah. We want to be called of God. This is the calling of God. Because to this you will call so that you may inherit a blessing. As you bless those that have done evil to you, God will bless you. In fact, forgiveness has nothing to do with God. It's mostly got to do with you. And it has nothing to do with the person that you forgive. Sometimes, yeah, the person will say, I receive your forgiveness. Great. They are free now. But forgiveness, when you choose to forgive, it has to do with you. It sets you free as a prisoner to unforgiveness. When you choose to forgive, the only person that truly benefit from that is you. And when the same token, when you choose not to forgive, the person that you're destroying is you. Unforgiveness is like a cancer inside of you, eating you up every single minute of your life. It will destroy your marriage. It will destroy your health. It will destroy your relationship. It will destroy many other things in your life. I tell you, just this word, unforgiveness, can destroy a lot of things. But that's not God's view. God has given us life, and we can choose today to walk in the forgiveness of God and choose today to forgive one another. Because forgiveness is showing mercy. Forgiveness is showing mercy. Just as we receive mercy from the Lord, we choose to show mercy. In the book of Luke chapter 6, Verse 35, it says, But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Okay, somebody asked me this question before. Uh, can we borrow money or lend money to one another in church? I say, no. I don't advise that. If somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, I really need money. Can you please loan me some money? I will not. If I have, I'll give it to you. Because once I give you a loan and you don't pay me back, hey, the relationship will be whew, a different story. So I don't loan. If I can give, I give. If I can't give, I say, sorry, I'll pray for you. We'll find another way to help you. Because in the house of the Lord, we are brothers and sisters. And that's what it says here. Lend them without expecting to get anything back. The best thing is give it. If they give you back, praise God. If not, that's way. Then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. That's what forgiveness is. Showing mercy to each other as God show you mercy. And forgiveness is overcoming evil with good. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 21, says, Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Forgiveness is overcoming evil with good. Rather than payback, revenge. I know about revenge. I, w I grew up in a house full of revenge. I in, 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 in the Chinese house, a lot of time, uh, we are taught to revenge. It's like if someone did evil to us, we say next time we'll pay you back. Even in the movies, have you seen Kung Fu movies, Chinese Kung Fu movies? Oh, it's always about revenge. You kill my brother, I'll kill you. You kill my father, I'll kill you. It's like, it's like <laughs> revenge. It's like a big deal, you know. But revenge is not of God. Let God do the revenge, amen? We are, we are called to forgive, all right? Because when you forgive, you allow the spirit of bitterness to disappear from your heart. 
but peace and joy to come in. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, it says this, verse 14, it says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Uh, it's, it's, it's so wonderful. See, the, the Hebrew writers say this, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. And he put this right after that, and to be holy. To live peaceful has to do with the holiness of God. To walk holiness, to walk in holiness of God, to be holy, has to do with walking peacefully with everyone. Hallelujah. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Hallelujah. You see that? No bitter root. If you don't forgive, a bitter root will start digging deeper into your heart. Deeper and deeper. And one day, just like any plant, when it starts going deeper and more roots start moving towards your heart, it will get hold of your heart. It's very difficult to get it out. That's why when it's still tiny, when the root just coming out, and you know it, immediately pull it out, hallelujah, by forgiving, by choosing to forgive. That is the power of forgiveness. When you choose to forgive, God can and will set you free. Louis B. Smithers said this, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. Hallelujah. You see that? It's such a powerful thing to learn to walk in forgiveness. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, he said this, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive you. Whoa, let's stop for a while. Your father will not forgive your sin if you choose not to forgive others' sin. That means we're talking about other people sinning against you, doing evil things to you. You still have to forgive their sin just as God forgive you of your sin. If you don't, God the Father said, I will not forgive you. The whole foundation of Christianity is that. There's no point even going to church if you choose not to forgive. There's no point even reading your Bible. It's all a lie. Fake news. That's what they call it, right? It's all fake. I've seen as a pastor for many years, I've seen Christians choose not to forgive, but still come to church as though nothing happened. Still read the Bible as though nothing happened. Some of them even prophesy. I had to stop them. I said, please stop. Unless you choose to forgive, don't even go near the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit anymore. Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a heart that chooses to, to, to have unforgiveness. Hallelujah. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. Can you imagine Jesus hanging on the cross he had to choose to forgive. If it depends on feeling, he would not want to forgive. The pain, the insult, the persecution, the beating that he received, any one of us, we, if we were there, hanging on that cross, we would say, if I have the power to kill all of them, I'll do it right now. But Christ has to choose, not based on the pain that he's going through, not based on the feeling of betrayal, not not based on any type of feeling, but a decision to walk in the will of God, choosing to forgive. And there will be a time we will have to choose, and it's going to be difficult. Just like Christ was hanging on the cross, He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. That, you, you think it's easy to say that? Some of us, we are not even hanging on the cross. We are not in pain. But yet, we are walking in unforgiveness. 
I say to those people, shame to you. Christ has done it all for you, and now you choose not to receive that. And let me tell you, it's, it's the power of God to walk in forgiveness. But the same token, it's destruction of the devil when you choose to not walk in forgiveness. There's a lady that came to us some years ago and asked us for advice because uh, her father has had uh, molested her when she was a young girl. And now the father, at his, at his old age, about to die, requested to see her. So she came to us for prayer and said, what should we, I do? All her family members, brothers, sisters, and others say, don't go and see. Let him die. He doesn't deserve anything. He doesn't deserve to see you. He molested you when you were a young girl. He deserved hell. That's it. But as a Christian, she felt something is not right here. So she came and asked us about it. I said, well, it's up to you. But I think it's a it's good, good thing to do is to reconnect. And maybe you can preach the gospel and get him saved. But first of all, you have to forgive. You say, oh, it's so many years ago. I don't even think about it anymore. I am totally fine. And how many times I've heard this? So Connie, you know, my wife, God bless her. She's so smart. And she say, well, if you have no problem about forgiving, let's just pray another prayer of forgiveness. Since you say you have no more problem, then no problem pray again. Okay, let's pray. The minute when we get to the part, I choose to forgive my father for what he had done. I mean, just, just the easiest prayer, simplest prayer, but when you get to the part, I choose to forgive my father, she stopped halfway, and she started choking. She started coughing, and the next thing, she started crying. She said, I can't do it. Just a few minutes ago, no problem. Oh, it's, lo- it's been a long time. I, I'm fine. But the minute when she chose to walk in true forgiveness, it was not easy. But you know what? She still had to choose to forgive every act. And I, I, we asked her, do you have to choose? Because th- by choosing to forgive the dad, all the memories come back. But it needed to come back for the healing to take place. It needed to come back for total forgiveness. Sometimes it's easy to forgive when you don't feel the pain, but when you feel the pain, you're like, whoa! But she was feeling that pain on that day. But you know what? She said, Jesus, help me. That's a beautiful part about God in the power of forgiveness is when you say, God, Thank you for your forgiveness. You chose me. You chose to forgive me. Now help me to choose to forgive those that have hurt me. And the minute she chose, not because of feeling, not because she understands, but she just chose to forgive in obedience to God. Boom, God set her free. And right after that, she was a free lady. Hallelujah. When she went to see her dad, she was able to go with such peace, such joy and and in a good spirit. Hallelujah. And she was able to share the gospel with anointing. With the anointing of God. Because when when you choose to forgive, there is anointing of God that will flow through that forgiveness. And she shared the gospel and boom, the father got saved. You see that, that power of forgiveness. The world cannot understand it. But we The people of God, we need to start walking in forgiveness. Jesus forgave. Another example in the Bible, Joseph. If you remember Joseph, his own brothers almost killed him, but decided to, okay, let's sell him off, make some money from him, out of him, sold him as a slave. So one day, when he was successful, he became a prime minister in Egypt when the brothers came to beg for food. You remember the story? When they realized it was him, they're like, oh, begging for life, please, please. I mean, at that time, Joseph can walk down the aisle, look at the brothers and say, hmm, 
three years jail. You five years jail. No food for you. I mean, he can revenge all he wants. He, he was a powerful man. He can do whatever. But yet, what did he say? He chose to forgive his brothers. Because he realized, yes, what they meant for evil, God meant it for good. That's the power of forgiveness. And I believe Joseph has chosen to forgive the brothers, not just on that day. I believe he chosen to forgive the brothers the first day. That's why God was able to help him. That's why in the final days, he was able to forgive so easily. Even though he wept, but it was not... A, a, he was not crying because he struggled to forgive. He crying that now I have opportunity to restore, to forgive, to truly forgive, to walk in that forgiveness. That is an example that we need to have. And one way we can have, we can choose to walk in forgiveness is to give up our right. I know in America it's a big thing. I have my right. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, when we choose to walk in forgiveness, we have to give up our right. Yes, you have a right. When someone did evil to you, you have a right to revenge, to say bad, to slap, to fight. Whatever, you have a right in the natural but you give up the right so that God's right come into your heart. And God's right is to choose to forgive. You see that? We have to deny ourselves that we may walk in the forgiveness of God. Hallelujah. Or else we will not able to forgive. And we need to learn to forgive. Not just one time, but as many times it requires for us so that we can continue to walk in the forgiveness of God. In the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 3, it says this, So watch yourself. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in the day, seven times come back to you saying, I repent. You must forgive them. Some of us, we get tired. You again. This time, no, last one. No, no, no. We have to forgive. In fact, Jesus said, forgive as many as seven times 70, right? I mean, we cannot stop forgiving. This is who we are. God forgive us so many times. If you count the sin that you have committed from the first day you became a Christian until now, it will be thousands of times maybe, hundreds of times. Some of you may be, yeah, holy people, three times, okay? But still, that's a lot of time, right? But God in each time chose to forgive us and give us grace and mercy. That's why His mercy are new every morning. We can walk in the forgiveness of God. Amen. Lastly, I want to share with you the sign, the signs of true forgiveness. When you truly forgive someone, you will not be happy when the person is suffering or having a problem. You know, some of us, yeah, we forgive, but when the person is having a tough time, problem, we're like, hmm, he deserves it because the last time he did that to me. Have you seen people like that? No, no, true forgiveness, you, are, you don't hold back anymore. Any bitterness, any anger, any, any feeling of revenge. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 17, it says, Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. You see that? Some of us, yeah, our enemy, people that we don't like, when they stumble, when they do mis did mistake, or when they fail, or something, be like, yeah. No, no, no. That's not who we are. And this is not talking about brothers and sisters. It's talking about enemies. And we learn to forgive, not just people in the church. We learn to forgive everybody. In fact, the person that we have to forgive a lot more than others, you know who? Ourselves. 
There are people today living in such guilt of something they have done and they can't forgive themselves. As God has forgiven you, if you ask God to forgive you, you need to learn to forgive yourself just as God forgives you. It is wrong for you not to forgive yourself because God has forgiven you. Who do you think you are? Who do you think you are that God Almighty can forgive you and you can't forgive yourself? Get over yourself. And learn to accept the grace of God. Learn to accept the forgiveness of God. We are not perfect. We need to let go because if you choose not to forgive yourself as God has forgiven you, you are putting a wall around yourself. You are not able to move forward. You will always feel with guilt, condemnation. You will suffer emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and sometimes physically. No, that's not God's view. Choose to forgive yourself. Choose to forgive God. He said, How, choose, what do you mean, choose to forgive us? Do you know a lot of Christians I find out all these years of counseling people? People have unforgiveness against God. Not because God did something bad to them. God is a good God. But they think, they feel, and because of what happened to them, indirectly, they won't say it, but they have unforgiveness towards God. But when you hear someone say this, I don't know why God did this. I'm not happy with him. Why did he allow this to happen to me? There are things that we say, we actually are not happy with God. And let me tell you, if you don't choose to let it go, you will develop an unforgiveness towards God. Not because God done anything wrong, it's just because we hold back something against God because Maybe God has not done things for you the way you want it. Yeah. Or maybe something bad happened to you. A death of a loved one. You lost a job. An accident. You lost money. Whatever bad. And like, hmm, God, why don't you bless me more than him? Why do you bless him, not me? All those things, if you're not careful, it develops something in our heart. And forgiveness towards God. And you got to let go and say, God, please forgive me for having that thought and that thing in my heart against you. Please forgive me. Get it out. That's not good. And learn to forgive one another. Truly forgive. Truly walk in forgiveness. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, say this. If your enemy is hungry... Give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. It simply means bless your enemy. It simply means forgive. It simply means you want good things to happen to those around you. Not just those that did good things for you, but even your enemies, people that betray you, people that have done bad things to you, you still choose to forgive because that's who we are. It doesn't matter what they have done to us. There is no reason that allows us to walk in unforgiveness. Whether it's racism, whether it's betrayal, husband and wife relationship, people in church, doesn't matter what, every day choose to walk in forgiveness. And those of you that just got married maybe the last five years, you're still in the honeymoon stage, it will come one day. Suddenly, you start feeling like you hate your wife or your husband. Choose to forgive every single day. I, my wife and I, we make an agreement from the beginning of our marriage that we will not sleep in unforgiveness. If we are angry with each other, if we have unforgiveness with each other, just before we fall asleep, we will turn and ask for forgiveness. If she doesn't turn to me first, I will turn to her. I wait for her. God, when is she going to ask for forgiveness, you know? <laughs> if, she say, if she doesn't come, then I, uh, okay, as a man, I better do it. <laughs> but no, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who, but we forgive each other. And sometimes forgiveness doesn't mean you agree with the person. Forgiveness doesn't mean you approve what the person is doing or thinking or, or whatever. Forgiveness is about you. Sometimes 
Connie and I will have disagreement. The disagreement become a quarrel, and that quarrel develop into anger and bitterness. But we choose to forgive at the end of the day, even though we still disagree. It doesn't matter, because forgiveness is not about agreeing. It's about your heart is in the right place. The thing I don't understand about Christian today is this. If you don't agree, that means you don't forgive me. Like, if I forgive you, it doesn't mean I need to agree with you. I still think that you are wrong. <laughs> but I forgive you. Let us agree to disagree, correct? But walk in forgiveness. Amen? We don't always have to agree. Let me tell you. Relationship as one, brothers and sisters, are more important than disagreement. I, I have friends that I disagree most of the time, but we are still friends until today. And it's like 30 years now. It doesn't matter because we go beyond. Friendship go beyond. This. The, the problem in church sometimes I don't understand it is this. It's like you disagree. I'm leaving the church. It's like, what is a relationship? How do we de develop long-term relationship if we just disagreement, just phew, gone? That's because we don't forgive. We have to learn to forgive. We have to choose to forgive. Amen? There's a saying by this man called Henry Ward Beecher. And he said this, I can forgive, but I cannot forget. Have you said this before? Have you said this before? I can forgive, but I cannot forget. It's the only other, another way of saying, I will not forgive. That's it. Because true forgiveness ought to be like a cancelled note, torn in two and burned up, so that it never can be shown against one. True forgiveness is it's gone. If I forgive you, I won't even think about it. If you have to think about it again and again, that means you truly have not truly forgiven the person. Maybe you need to forgive again and again. Like Connie said one time, every time she felt like she had forgiven, the next day when she thought of the person, she felt oh, angry again. Forgive again. Sometimes it may take a year. Sometimes it may take months. It doesn't matter. If you choose, every single day it gets easier and easier and easier and one day you see yourself free. Because some unforgiveness is deep. Sign on forgiveness take time. But as you walk, as you choose to walk every single day, you will be set free. Hallelujah. Uh, recently, we were watching, uh, Connie was, was watching um, a television um, investigation documentary show. She loved those. Uh, it's about DNA and all those things. Uh, how they catch today, how they catch people through DNA, you know. Um, anyway, she was watching this thing, and she was telling me, it really touched my heart, uh, about, I think it's an 80-year-old woman alone in a house, and one night she forgot to lock her, house, her door. And a young man came in and raped her. And through, and, and, and through the DNA and everything, and they, they found out this young man, and they arrested this, this young man. And of course, he was crying in the court. Uh, I don't know what happened to me. I don't know why I did this. I'm so sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Crying. 80 years old woman. Rape her. And then the, the judge said, oh, is there anything you want to say before we close to this old lady? The old lady stood up and said, for your sake and my sake, I choose because of Jesus Christ to forgive you. When, when you hear things like that, you say, who is the winner here? Yes, she had gone through, I mean, I don't even want to go and say I understand anything. Let me tell you, true forgiveness is to let go. True forgiveness is to say it's painful, it's disgusting, but I still will forgive. I mean, a few years ago, many of you were not here, uh, a, a man that came and spoke in this church, he and his wife were missionary to Lebanon, and one day, his wife was shot in the face by a terrorist. 
I mean, if your wife is shot by a terrorist, you're like, okay, give me a gun. I'm going to find that guy and shoot him back. But you know what the guy did? He chose to forgive and remain there to serve. That's true forgiveness. And friend, we need to start walking in true forgiveness. Unforgiveness, remember this, is the spirit of the world. It's not of Christ. It's anti-Christ. And church, we need to start. And today, as we are partaking the communion, what a time that we can have today. Not just remembering what Christ had done for us on the cross, the forgiveness that we can receive from Him, but it's also a day that you and I, we can let it go on forgiveness. If the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you, is showing you there are people and come to your mind or your heart, that you need to choose to forgive before you partake this communion. Friends, I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, let it go. Choose to forgive today and say, God, I choose to forgive so-and-so. I choose to forgive so-and-so what they've done to me. I choose to forgive. It doesn't matter you think it's right or wrong what they did or they think it's right or wrong, but you choose to forgive. It's not about who is right or wrong. It's about you choose to forgive. Choose to let it go so that you can partake the forgiveness of God with such blessing of the Lord today. Amen? So, I want the communion server to come and, and, and serve the communion. Uh, when you get this communion, hold it on your hand. And we're going to pray, we're going to sing this song. But most of all, before we partake this communion, I want you to pray. I want you to ask the Lord. I say, God, is there anyone that I have unforgiveness Lord, today I choose to forgive. And if God gave you the name of the person, whether it's one or two or maybe ten, you today, right now, you choose to forgive. Say the name of the person out and say, God, I choose to marry so and so, uh, choose to forgive so and so. I choose to forgive. Say the person. Don't say it loud in, in the sense of other people listening it, but so that you can hear it, so that you can know that it's from the depth of your heart. We choose to forgive today. Hallelujah. Communion server will come and pass this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to have your eyes closed. If you stand with me, just close your eyes. Let's take a few minutes before we partake the Lord's communion. Ask the Holy Spirit to come right now to search our heart. And those of you watching right now on live stream, will you close your eyes with us? Let's ask the Holy Spirit to come right now. Lord, search our heart. Do something deep in our heart, oh God. Oh Lord, if there's any unforgiveness in us, oh God, Father, that you will show us. And today, Father, we choose to forgive. We choose to give it all to you. Come on, just ask the Holy Spirit to come right now. receive the communion element if you can quickly lift up your hand wherever you are we'll ask someone to pass it to you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord Father we come before you right now in the name of Jesus 
Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you have done in our heart, oh God. We thank you, Father, that you are so, so good. You are so, so wonderful, God. We thank you, God, that you care for us, that you love us. We thank you, God, that you never fail, that your grace, your amazing grace is here for us. And Father, today as we partake this communion, Lord, we choose to walk in forgiveness. We choose to walk in your promises. We choose to walk, oh God, in your love that we may continue to love one another through the forgiveness of Christ. Father, help us, oh God. I pray, God, as we come together as one church to partake this communion, Lord, that you will bring healing, not just in our heart, but in our body, in our soul. And Father, I pray right now for divine healing in the name of Jesus. And Father, right now, we want to pray for Mala that is here right now with us. We thank God for her life. We thank God, God, that you have preserved her. We thank God that, God, that you have done amazing work in her. And we pray right now for her for complete healing, for complete restoration. We pray and we speak healing into her body. We speak strength into her body right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, all things are possible to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all that you've done. I thank you, Lord, for greater things that you have for each and every one of us, oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, by your strike, we are healed. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, right now, we pray for those that are sick. They may not be here right now, wherever they are. Lord, that you touch them. And for those that are watching through live stream, Lord, touch those they are sick in their body right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bring healing. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. And when he have given thanks, in the same way, sorry, verse 25, in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake the cup together. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of Jesus, for your forgiveness, for your mercy and grace. You can pass the cup to the house, the ashes will come and collect it quickly. Thank you, Lord. Let's give thanks to God. Come on, lift your hand and sing. Give thanks Christ to God. my Savior, rescue me, thank you Jesus, set me free, Christ my Savior.
you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for all that you've done for each and every one of us. Father, bless your people, I pray. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Before we close the service, um, there's one announcement we want to make to you to make you aware of. Uh, most of you have known Uncle Willis Townsend uh, has passed away on Monday at 2.05 a.m. Um, I know many of you uh, that have been in this church for a long time, you know him quite well. We thank God for his life. Uh, he's supposed to, to celebrate his 99th birthday this ending of August. But I guess God said, nope, come home now. And so, but almost 99. So can you imagine? We're so proud of him and, and things that God have done. Uh, the memorial service will be on uh, this Saturday. And uh, because of the governor, only allowed 30 people. A lot of us will not be able to make it. Uh, but um, we will try to do live stream on YouTube for the, all of you uh, that are here that wanted to be part of the service can watch it online. So check your email this week. Uh, we will send out the link. We will send out whatever we, information to you so that you can be part of the service that's here. Uh, we, originally, I thought it will be allowed 70, 75 people so that we all can be here. But now for funeral and wedding, it's only 30 people. So that um, caused a problem now. But thank God. Thank God for all that He has done for us. Amen. Let's sing this song before we close and let's celebrate. Let's worship the Lord for His goodness. right now um, getting ready to give birth so let's pray for her right now amen father right now god we just want to lift up hillary to you we thank you god that we can pray for her right now father give her strength give her strength in the name of jesus oh help this delivery to go smoothly in the name of jesus lord i just pray for your hand to be upon her lord we just commit her and the baby into your hand right now. Lord, preserve, strengthen right now in Jesus' name. We give you praise. And Father, right now, I want to pray for each and every one of us here as we go today. Father, help us, remind us, Holy Spirit, to continue to walk in forgiveness. The spirit of forgiveness of God, let it rise in our heart today. Help us to choose to forgive each day all the time. Father, bless your people as they go today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. God bless you. And thank you so much for coming.